In our gospel last week, Jesus tells us not to worry. On the far side of worry, of our insecurity that can make us obsessed or fixated on possessions, a worry that can make us selfish and greedy, on the far side of this is faith. The author of Hebrews tells us what faith is. He writes, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The old King James says it's the substance of things hoped for or the realization of things hoped for. In this chapter in Hebrews especially, faith is about believing a promise. Believing in a promise. Believing in something that is not present or not yet visible. So here in Hebrews, faith is very closely linked with hope. Earlier in the epistle of Hebrews, hope is called an anchor of the soul, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Now, an anchor is something that gives you stability and constancy in the midst of the wind and the waves that would toss you about. But instead of a ship's anchor going down into the invisible depths of the sea, trusting in God gives us an anchor of hope that reaches into the future and connects us to it so that we begin now to live in God's future. Faith is also like putting down roots. We often talk about putting down roots. But it's an upside down kind of thing where we are putting our roots down, but we're putting them up towards the heavens and into heaven. In faith, we grasp things that are promised as real. We grasp the things promised as being substantial. And that's what makes Christian hope something more than a wish. Faith is the difference. It's not just a desire, not just a wish, but hope grounded in faith is a binding assurance something that gives us assurance so that we can live as if this truly is the case. When we live this way, our faith says that there is a reality that is not presently visible or not yet visible, but is nevertheless real. When we believe God's promises, this becomes the way that we live. Our life becomes a life of constancy, a life of persistence and assurance. Now the author of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 11 then goes on for the whole chapter giving a catalog of examples of faith, of what faith with this relation to what is not seen looks like. So I talked about an anchor and talked about roots. You can also use the metaphor of a a compass needle. We don't see magnetic north, but we see the needle of a compass move and point to it. All of these examples that the author of Hebrews gives us are like many compass needles pointing beyond themselves to that which is promised to them, that they lived in relation to this promised reality. The author recounts from Genesis, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, as we will focus on today, 
and then Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses, and then the Exodus, and then the entry into the promised land into Canaan, and then the judges and the prophets, and those who remain faithful under persecution and exile. Today, we can focus, as our reading has us, on the specific example of the faith of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham is called to leave his home, his home in Mesopotamia. And he's called to leave and to go, but he isn't told where it was he was going. He was given a direction. And he's given the promise of an inheritance, but he didn't know where to go. He didn't know where it was that he was going. Sarah believed, eventually, the promise of God, that even though she had never had any children and was now old, that she would become pregnant. Indeed, that she would have as many descendants as the stars of heaven and the sands of the seashore. Now, the promises that were made to Abraham and to Sarah of a land of inheritance and of a great nation of descendants, these, we are told, they only greeted from afar. They greeted these promises from afar. And they died in faith, not yet having received the things promised. This whole chapter of examples of faith and this definition of faith shows us that faith and hope give us a security. Trusting in the promises of God give our life a security that enables us to live lightly. We are told that um, these examples of faith, they lived as sojourners, as strangers and exiles. They did not build and find their security and meaning in a city of man in the present, but they, as we read, look forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Now, in our gospel this week, Jesus, again, shows us this faith, this trust and hope that is on the far side of worry. Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Therefore, he says, hold lightly to what is passing, of what is passing away. He says, sell your possessions and give alms. Don't hoard what you have, because it's going to pass away anyway. Might as well use it to help people who are here. He says, make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. He's saying don't put your trust or don't base your security on things in the present that will pass away, that are here today and gone tomorrow. But rather live a life of faith, of trust in God, of hope, of resting in God's promises This is a life of patience and waiting, but also a life of persistence and stability. Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But rather, trust in God. Keep going. Keep the faith. Hold fast and stay true, 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen.